all the man-made emission of CO2 to the atmosphere on Earth comes from concentrated source. A concentrated source comes from smokestacks in power plants, um, metal smelters, or cement factories. Today we have a technology to capture the CO2 from these smokestacks, inject it into the continental and oceanic crust, and keep it there as carbon and natural gas has been kept for millions of years within the history of the Earth. However, this method is expensive and some people question the safety of it and it has not taken off as needed to fight the battle against climate change. Here in Iceland, a group of international scientists and engineers has developed a method, what we refer to as the CARPEX methods, where we capture CO2 from a geothermal power plant, we dissolve it in water, we inject it into basaltic rocks, where we form minerals within two years after injection, and this is the safest way of storing carbon on Earth. And the beauty of it, it is safe and it is relatively non-expensive because the Achilles heel of carbon capsule storage, sometimes referred to as CCS, is its cost and safety. Why can we do this here, but not, for example, in the sedimentary basin in the North Sea? Basaltic rocks, the most abundant rocks on Earth because they cover the seafloor and about 5 to 10 percent of the continents, is very rich in calcium, magnesium and iron um, which form metals that can bind with, car with carbonate and form solid mineral in the forms of carbonates. Uh, we started, well the first time when this was done on a, on a big scale was in 1996 at the Sleipnir site in the North Sea. Statoil, the Norwegian state company, it captured CO2 from natural gas it was going to send on the European market. There was too much CO2 in it and it could, had two options. It could emit it to the atmosphere or it could develop a method to inject it into sedimentary layers uh, you know, below, below the gas platform there in the North Sea. At that time, there was a $50 per ton of CO2 emitted tax in Norway. So there was an incentive to figure out and do some uh, solution for this. So from 1996, they've been injecting about 1 million ton per year of CO2 into the so-called Utsira formation, which is a quartz sandstone, where it stays in the, within the sediments, but the CO2 that the injector is in what is called the supercritical phase, it's buoyant, it's less dense than the surrounding water, so it has a tendency to rise from the seafloor up towards the, up from the rocks up towards the seafloor and then eventually could make it into the ocean and into the atmosphere. It doesn't, the CO2 doesn't form minerals because there's a lack of calcium, magnesium and iron in these sedimentary rocks. Therefore, in, 90, in 2007 we formed this CARPEX group and aiming at developing a method for injecting CO2 into basaltic rocks. We started in 2012, we did the first uh, uh, injection, pilot injection, and there we proved with what we claim to be very ingenious uh, uh, scientific methods. We labeled all the carbon we, we injected and we were able to prove it would form minerals in two years. In 2014, Reykjavik Energy, the Reykjavik power company, started to use this as an industrial scale solution in their emission. Plus they captured not only CO2 but also hydrogen sulfide gas that was emitted from the smokestacks, injected into the hotter part of the system and last year Reykjavik Energy doubled the capacity and there are plans to take all the H2S and majority of CO2 and inject it underground. And the beauty of this, this method is relatively 
non-expensive. The cost of capturing and storing uh, one ton of this gas mixture is about $25 per ton, which is far cheaper or far less expensive than conventional carbon capture and storage methods. Sometime around 2005 and 2006, Europe started what they called the Emission Trading Scheme. Every company that emits more than 100,000 tons of CO2 per year enter this market. After some time, they pay for every ton they admit to the atmosphere. This should be an incentive to develop some method to capture CO2 from their emission stream and then some of that could be injected back into the ground in the method called carbon capture and storage, where the carbon would stay for millions of years, or at least a thousand years. Now, during the economical crash in 2008, the price of this, um, well, this, any CO2 emission went on the, on the open market and where people could trade with it. And in the beginning, the price of each ton of CO2 emitted was about 25 euros per ton. During the economic crash, the price of this emission went through the floor. Actually, it had no value. Eventually, then, through some political pressure and uh, regulations, the price rose again. But it's been staying between 10 and 5 euros per ton, and presently it's around 5 euros per ton of CO2. Now, the carbon capture and CO2 methods that have been developed in US, in Europe, price of captured CO2 and stored is somewhere off the order of 40 to 120 dollars per ton. So there's not much of an incentive for the European heavy industry and power plants to do something about their emission since they can emit for the price of 5 euros per ton while the cost of capturing and storage CO2 is somewhere from 25 to 120 euros per ton. The regulations or actually the amount of quota need to be shrunk so the price of CO2 emission on the emission trading scheme is much higher than today, at least of the order of 20 to 50 euros per ton of CO2. Otherwise, the heavy industry and the power industry in Europe will sit behind.